All right, we want to find the standard matrix for a transformation, which is the orthogonal projection onto the span of this one vector. So we're projecting onto a line, right? So there's two methods that we could use to solve this question. The first one is using our trusted um, formula that we derived last time, which is the standard matrix for any of these projection trans transformations is given by A, A transpose A inverse, um, A transpose. And, where, and you're like, what is A? Well, A is a matrix whose columns are a basis for the subspace you're projecting onto. So in this case, we're, we're projecting onto the line spanned by this vector. So this vector forms a basis for that subspace that we're projecting onto. So our matrix A in this case would just be a three by one matrix. It would just be this guy. Its columns are the basis vectors for the subspace you're projecting onto. So, and then we can just plug and chug. So that's method one, is we can just plug and chug into this. We get our standard matrix is given by this. So plugging in, we get A times A transpose A, the whole thing inverse, times A transpose. So it looks a little funky, but we can certainly simplify this. We get A, we'll simplify the inverse matrix first. This guy is, well, let's think, does this grow into a three by three matrix or shrink into a one by one matrix? Well, let's look, this is, this is a one by three matrix times a three by one matrix. And remember the outer numbers give the dimension of the product. So this th one by three times a three by one is gonna give us a one by one matrix. So this is just the dot product. So it's just negative one times negative one plus two times two plus one times one. And then that just gets you six. So it's this one by one matrix six and we're doing the inverse of that guy. And what's the inverse of a one by one matrix? Think about it while well, I finish writing. Uh, that's just, it's just a scalar at this point. When it's a one by one matrix, it's just a scalar. So the inverse of a scalar is just one over the scalar, right? So this is just times one over six times negative one, two, one, right? So then I can, I can move this scale. I could distribute it in already, or I could just move it all the way to the left. This is equal to one over six times this vector times this matrix or these two matrices. Now this is a three by one times a one by three. Now it's gonna blow up into a three by three. And to do that, it's just negative one times this guy becomes the first column. I mean, this is just matrix multiplication. I trust that you guys um, can do this by now. It's just kind of weird that it's like uh, just one column and then just one row, but it's the same process as just multiplying any matrices together. So this is what you end up getting. So after simplifying, you get this matrix here, you can distribute the one six in, or you don't have to, but this matrix is our standard matrix for the linear transformation that projects input vectors onto the line spanned by this vector. Um, you could test it, although I, I don't know how you could really verify that, uh, but okay, this is, this is the answer. Just trust the process. But this is the answer by doing method number one, which is using this this big formula here. But another way you could solve this problem, which I haven't talked about in this playlist yet, but if you have a vector here, let's call this vector V, okay? And then you have another vector like this, and let's call this vector U. Projecting U onto V would get you, orthogonally projecting U onto V, would get you U, would get you, this is a good terminology, project, would get you the projection onto V of U. Okay, and that's this vector right here. Um, there's a formula for this. And that formula is the projection onto, the projection of one vector U onto another vector V is given by U dot V over V dot V times U, or sorry, times V. And so this is just a scalar over a scalar. So this is all the, this is just a big scalar multiplied through to the vector V. And if you look, that kind of makes sense because the projection of U onto V, this little guy here, is just some scalar multiple of V, as this is telling you. So here's the formula. And the whole, the whole thing about method number two is that we're gonna use like the age old method where we see what happens to the columns of the identity matrix and wherever they land up, those are the columns of your standard matrix. So we're gonna say our standard matrix is 
t of e1. See, this whole transformation is taking place in R3. So we're going to have three columns. They're going to be the columns of the 3 by 3 identity matrix. So we're just going to use this you know, old formula that we've been using for a long time. And, and we're going to use this formula to get t of e1 and t of e2. So let's see. We want to project. We want to see what happens when we project onto. I'm going to go up here just for notation's sake and say that the span of this vector, this is our subspace, let's just call it W. We're projecting onto that subspace, which is just a line. So the projection onto W of E1, right, which is 1, 0, 0. That projection is, by this formula, this vector dotted with the basis vector for W, uh, divided by the basis vector for w dotted with itself times the basis vector for w. So, so I never mentioned, but projecting one vector onto another vector means the same thing as projecting one vector onto the line spanned by the other vector. Um, whatever. So yeah. So then we so we're going to use this formula u dot v or u dot the spanning vector of w, uh, which is one zero zero, and we're dotting it with all the way up here, well, let's remind ourselves, what was it? Negative 1, 2, 1. That's our spanning vector. Negative 2, I forget it already. Negative, negative 1, 2, 1. Negative 1, 2, 1. Okay, all divided by negative 1, 2, 1, dotted with itself. Negative 1, 2, 1. And this is some big scalar, or not, it doesn't have to be a big, I'm just saying like it, it, it's a big expression, simplifies to a scalar. And then we multiply that scalar through by 1, 0, 0. So this projection of some vector onto another vector is going to be another vector. It's not going to give you a scalar. So let's simplify this. Simplifies pretty easily. This vector dotted with this is 1 times negative 1 plus 0 times 2 plus 0 times 1. Just gets you negative 1 divided by, uh, let's see. 1 plus 4 plus 1, 6 times 1. Oh, this is wrong. See, I messed up. I messed up big time. Here, let me pause the video and fix it. So we're projecting onto the vector negative 1, 2, 1. So this vector here should be negative 1, 2, 1, not 1, 0, 0. Okay. Everything's good in the hood. So this here is T of E1. So you see how this method works. So we found t of e1, and we do the same thing for t of e2. We do the projection onto w of e2, which is this guy, which equals, and you do the dot product, and multiply through, you get t of e2. And you do the same thing for t of e3, and you get t of e3. You put those vectors as the columns of this matrix, just like so, and then you should recover this guy. So I'm going to pause the video and finish it up and then verify that we get the same answer. Here we go. So I've done the same process for t of e2 and t of e3. I get these three um, vectors here. And I put them, as shown here, as the columns of a matrix. I do that. I factor out the 1, 6. That's common in all of them. And then here, here is my final answer for the standard matrix of the transformation using method number 2. And then we can compare that up here to our final answer using method number one and see that it is exactly the same. So I guess just pick your poison, whichever method seems less hairy to you or whichever one you understand the best, go ahead and use that. Um, but yeah, that about does it. So um, I'll see you in the next video where we do some more example problems on like orthogonal decomposition and projections and all that good stuff. So stay tuned.